Hey, what's up crew? John G back again. Water feature design series number eight. We're back on wetland filtration. Today, I am here at my buddy Steve's house. I call him Gus and we're putting in a wetland filter. I want to let you guys know how I lay this thing out. We're going we're gonna to show you in detail. I actually have a schematic here on my clipboard I'm going to share with you. I like to draw these things out ahead of time and uh, we're going we're gonna to take you through the process of how we get here, what our goal is. He's got an existing koi pond. We have an old uh, Aquascape biofalls here from, I don't know, we put his pond in for him 20 years ago at a different house. He moved it here after that. It's been a long time. We're giving him a major upgrade. I want to share this with you guys. So we have an existing stream we're going to have to tie into, and I want to share with you how we set all this up. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to figure out where is going to be finished grade? That's step number one. What's finished grade look like in this area? Obviously, I've got a lot of shrubbery. I've got a rip out of here. We got our brand new CAT 303 excavator on the job site, which makes us super happy. And uh, so that's what we're gonna do. Dig in, squirrel, sorry. We're, we're gonna dig in here and figure out what my finished grade is, which I'm gonna set. That will allow me to establish a benchmark. And what a benchmark is, is it's a spot that we designate to set our transit as ground level because everything that we're gonna do in this project is based off of ground level. You have to get that exactly right and it has to maintain the same spot. What I see happening on job sites all the time is people come out and they set grade here, they set grade there, they're moving their laser transit around from spot to spot, it gets changed. That's how you get elevation screwed up. That's how things turn out not quite right at the end of the job. Set a benchmark. Good idea if you don't have something like the lines on the porch over here is what I'll use to set my laser up. But if you don't have that, Put a piece of rebar or a stake in the ground somewhere off to the side of the site and then base everything on that for the entire project. That will allow you to keep your elevations intact. The next thing you want to have is what I've got right here. You want to have a good drawing. You want to take the time to lay out your elevations. I'll show you guys all this stuff close up so you see what we're doing. So the first thing you want to know is how do you size your wetland filter, right? What is the right size for the pond? There is no exact answer for that, guys. If you go to Aquascape's catalog, they have some guidelines that you can go by. Pretty much what you're going to see is on the smaller ponds, they start out at about 15% of the surface area of the pond for the wetland. In this area, he has an enormous fish load in his pond. Number one issue, filter gets bigger. He has a lot of runoff that goes into his pond. Number two issue, filter gets bigger. We're putting him in an oversized wetland because I want his water to stay pristine, I want his fish to stay healthy. You have to take all the environmental factors into consideration when it comes to sizing the wetland filter for the water feature that you're building. So don't think that there's just this cookie cutter answer to your question. Go by the guidelines and if you're ever not sure about what you're doing, go bigger because in filtration a small filter is not a good thing. So I'm yapping, I'm gonna get busy. All right guys, so we got all the stuff ripped out of here. I wanna talk a little bit about what the next step is. We set our grade up. We know where our water level is. We're getting ready to dig the first shelf down to 15 inches. We're gonna paint it on the ground, get ourselves our nice creative shape, and it's time to get busy. Our footprint on the ground, the way that it works out is, is I do the design and I figure out what is my footprint for my aqua blocks. Then I'm gonna give myself a couple extra feet outside of the aqua blocks for all of my stonework and to create some curvature in the feature so that it looks sexy when we get done. We want it to work, we also want it to look fantastic. We're gonna start digging the upper level, that outer ring where the stones go because that'll be our first cut. We're gonna cut that in. And according to the drawing that I've done, I've got six inches of freeboard. What freeboard is, is it's how much liner level do I have above water? and you want to make sure that you have enough freeboard in your feature to really uh, 
give you some security because when some leaves jam this thing up and the water level goes up two inches, you don't want to be getting a call for a leak. So I like to keep six inches of liner above water level in this filtration situation and that allows for plant material to grow in and stuff to fluctuate a little bit without calling any issues. So uh, causing any issues, sorry. So what we're going to do, we're going to determine ground level, we're going to go down six inches of freeboard, we're going to go down nine inches of water and that is going to give us our first shelf. We're looking at our first shelf being laid out 15 inches of an excavation below ground level. I'm done yapping, I've been talking too long already, let's get busy. Sorry. <laughs> we're back. We're back guys. It's lunchtime. We got everything ripped out and we have our first shelf dug. What we talked about, 15 inches below grade. We're about plus or minus an inch in here. It's not super important because we got enough room in here to play that if we're off a little bit it doesn't matter. The next layer down is the square where our aqua blocks go. That's super important. I've got my drawing right here. I'm six foot six in one direction. I'm seven foot six in the next direction. I'm gonna mark that square out down with my spray paint, and then we are going to dig down another 33 and a half inches. You watch it happen, we'll get it all done, and then we'll talk about why it matters. That's all I gotta say about that. Boys, we've got all the hard work done. I'm worn out from sitting in the machine. I figured I'd stop and talk to you guys a little bit about what's going on. People ask me a lot about how we situate everything in the bottom of the reservoir, and I think it's really important on a, on a small, I know it does probably look small to you, but for us, this is a small wetland. We build these big enough to filter out lakes. And uh, for us, this is just a little guy, but it, it's still great for a normal size pond. I'm rambling guys, it's so hot I think maybe I fried my brain. Um, let me tell you about the level in the bottom of here. What we typically do on one this size is we just make this bottom level completely perfectly flat and then get the centipede. This whole centipede will be dropped down as you'll see to below this level so that our aqua blocks are going to lay perfectly flat in here. If there's any slope at all on this thing when it's put into the ground you want your centipede to slope up. What are you looking at? You want your centipede to slope up so that as you're doing a clean out later, the debris in the water flows down into your clean out. That's what this snorkel is for. So if you're doing a massive wetland filter, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna slope the entire bottom of the wetland just a smidge, only in one direction. Like you don't want the aqua block sloping, you want them to pack perfectly tight together. That's where they get their most load bearing capacity. But you wanna slope the whole bottom in the direction towards the snorkel by just a little bit so that when you wash, it's easy to flush a large volume of water through, remove all the organic debris. I'm yapping again, guys. That's all you really need to know about this. We're gonna run our plumbing into the end of this. This stuff is coming back out. We're gonna finish up our day. We're gonna get it dug, laid out. We're gonna put our underlayment into this hole so that we have a protective layer between the soil and the liner. The liner's going in, the snorkel and the centipede's gonna go in, then we're gonna put some more underlayment in, we'll show you how the aqua blocks go together, how everything gets snugged in. When we run our centipede in this direction, two aqua blocks long can go out that way before you need more centipedes. That's to help you design a larger wetland filtration system. But for us right now, we don't have to worry about any of that. We're gonna get this thing tucked in. Our goal for the end of the day today is to have this completely done, 
liner and underlayment completely in, aqua blocks in. We want to have all of our, our three to six inch stone packed around the edges so that everything's cinched up tight. And we want to get some water in this thing before we leave in case it rains tonight because you never seen anything worse than working. Sorry, beep that out. Working your butt off all day long to get your reservoir done and you leave and you get a massive rainstorm and all the water runs underneath and this thing acts just like a big boat and you come in and everything's just like and you get to pull it all out and you get to clean it up and do it all again. Avoid that, it's no fun. I'm out, watch the time lapse. This is about all you're gonna see to the end, later. man my pond people thanks so much for hanging out with me I hope you guys are enjoying the show the end of day one looks like a big pit but in the next episode I am going to run get a massive cedar log that I've had stashed for just this type of a project and two loads of beautiful Tennessee mountain stone boulders we are gonna knock this project out of the park I want to exceed Gus's expectations and I want you all to see how you can take a pit in the ground and turn it into a beautiful asset to someone's water feature. It's not just a filter, it's a work of art. Stay tuned. Thanks guys. Oh, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. 
or don't, whatever.